Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron and today we are going to be going over the builds that I use with the overclocks for the coil gun. Most of the coil guns overclocks are actually quite flexible. I've built them quite a few different ways and I haven't really been disappointed with them, um, at least in the ways that you build them. Some of the effects I'm not the biggest fan of. So let's talk about each of them. The first one we got is our one clean overclock, which is called ultra magnetic coils. What the ultra magnetic coils does is increase our trail radius and our trail duration. We get an extra second on it. So we go from five seconds to six seconds and our trail radius goes from 0.3 up to 0.8. This just makes it easier to hit more enemies, makes it better against crowds, um, makes it better for lingering effects like the uh, electricity trail here in tier five. So for this one, I'll usually build it just the way that I build my normal coil gun setup. It works just fine. You can build this really however you like using the coil gun though. It's just gonna feel like a bonus to the gun. So usually in tier one, I'll go with the larger battery just so I have more shots overall. Tier two, I usually go with improved feeding system. For the faster reload speed. In tier 3 I like going with a concussive shockwave. This gives us the 50% chance to stun enemies. This does last for 3 seconds and then we'll also be doing a little bit more damage over time from our trail. In tier 4 I really like the defense enhancement. This one feels really good to use because you can use it to um, prevent yourself from taking fall damage as well as if you can't get out of the way of a particular attack, maybe a spitball or spitting at you or something, you can just charge up the gun. You don't actually even need to shoot it, you just need to charge it and you will get the fall damage reduction. And then in tier 5 I like going with electricity trail, again it lasts an extra second, deals more damage over time, or at least lets enemies sit in that trail for longer, as well as they'll probably be stunned since we are taking the stun with this. You could potentially go with the even bigger trail radius in tier 5, that's pretty fun too. It is noticeably bigger and allows you to hit more enemies. So if you want to have this as kind of crowd control, you can. So if you plan on taking this with like a standard minigun loadout, maybe you're taking a little bit more oomph or something. And then this one, you're just going to use to snipe things and to fire into crowds to do a little bit more damage over time. You could also go with the catalyst over here too. But if you're taking this one, you're probably going to want to be taking um, a fire primary weapon or fire grenades at the very least. So now we move on to our balanced overclocks, of which we have three. The first one is called Backfeeding Module, and this one feels alright to me. It's honestly not my favorite out of the overclocks for the coil gun, but it feels alright. If you like using the coil gun pretty often, then it's fine. Now for this particular overclock, I usually try to compensate for the damage. Now if you take the tier 1 in damage, you'll be going up to 120 damage, which is not quite enough. 130 damage actually hits a really nice uh, breakpoint without armor breaking on standard grunts because um, standard grunts have 108 health and they have a reduction of 20% on their light armor. So any damage that isn't considered armor piercing, which makes it so the coil gun hits the exact amount of damage that you need to one shot regular grunts, at least in the body. If you hit him in the head, it will absolutely kill him even with that, even with this reduction in damage because you still have 80. So this will be doubled if you hit him in the head, 140. You have plenty there and that also doesn't count for any armor so it's just a flat 140. So if you do take this damage you're not going to be hitting enough damage to actually one shot body shot a grunt normally. Uh, if you take the electric trail then you definitely can because this only needs to tick twice I believe. Twice or three times on an enemy. I think it's three times actually. This needs to tick three times on a regular enemy and it will kill them. You can also instead of going with the damage here you can go with overcharger in tier two. This will let you hit more damage than you would just by taking the extra damage here, as, assuming that you charge it up all the way. So you can take extra ammo or the faster charge rate if you just want a weapon that can uh, be used for sniping or be used for crowds. I have tried the uh, charge speed with the overcharger and it does take time to get used to, but it's not a bad option if you want to use this weapon quickly and still benefit from the huge amount of ammo that you get. Usually I just like going with the extra damage in tier 1, that way I have enough damage, especially with the electric channel in tier 5, which I usually take with this particular overclock. Tier 2, I will usually go with the improved feed mechanism, just because I have extra ammo. I don't really need to go with the overcharger, it wouldn't be a bad option. And then the controlled magnetic flow is also an option. This one can be really good if you are used to how much damage the coil gun does and what your breakpoints are and where you're hitting an enemy. If you know you're gonna hit an enemy in the weak spot, then you can do something like a half charge with this, at least if you're running the extra coil, and then kill normal grunts with one shot. Again, assuming you're hitting them in the head. Um, that's not always super easy to do, especially if you wanna hit multiple enemies. That's usually why I don't take it with this overclock. Sometimes I'll take it with some of the other overclocks though. 
Uh, anyway, in tier 3, it's your choice. Concussion rounds is really good. You can stun enemies. Fear is also really good. Depends on what you want. Do you want it to be scaring enemies away, or do you want to just stun them to where they can't move? I usually like the stun more than the fear, but it's really your choice. In tier 4, once again, I do like the defense enhancement, but Shockwave is really good with this too. Especially if you plan on using the uh, charge up build. So if you plan on building it like this, or you know, whatever you want in tier 5 here, then the Shockwave is really good because it makes it so you can charge up the gun very quickly and fire it at uh, high value targets like acid spitters or slashers or something like that and still damage everything close to you or kill at least all of the small enemies near you. So jellyfish and the swarmers, you can use it for that. So I have tried messing with this both ways. It works both ways. Um, the way that I usually like it is like this, but the charge build I think also works pretty well. It's definitely different but it can be a lot of fun to use too. Moving on to our next overclock, we have Reatomizer. Reatomizer is kind of an interesting overclock. Well, it is a very interesting overclock the way that it works because as the shot penetrates multiple enemies, the status effect of those enemies or the frontmost enemy is then applied to other enemies behind it with the exception of burning, freezing, or warden buffs. And this comes at the cost of a slightly longer reload speed. That's not a huge deal for the downside. Although the upside I still say is a little bit questionable with Reanimizer. Um, I think it has been fixed now or can't work the way that it could before where you could uh, have the elite status effect put on other enemies as well as on Steve. I don't know if they've kept it on Steve. I haven't checked, but I think last time I heard people were saying that you can no longer make multiple elite enemies by accident, which is a good thing because this could come at a very big detriment to you if you end up firing through say a elite slasher and you make an elite detonator or an elite horde of regular grunts and stuff like that, that could be potentially really bad. The fact that you can make an elite Steve was pretty awesome that you could do that. This one requires a good amount of setup to actually get to work for you to deal a lot of damage to enemies. And it has to be that you hit the enemy that is affected by some sort of status effect and then punch through to hit more enemies behind it, which is already not the easiest thing to do in the world, um, especially with the coil gun where a lot of the regular enemies that you shoot will just die outright. So this one I find better in multiplayer than in solo. In solo, it's pretty difficult to set up effects on enemies, then use Reatomizer to hit other enemies. And uh, it's just, it feels like it's a bit too much setup, even though I really like the idea of Reatomizer. I think it's a really cool concept. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the way that I build it. So in tier one, I'll usually go with extra ammo because we don't necessarily need more damage. You can go with more damage if you want to one shot body shot a couple of other enemies and make it a little bit easier on yourself. If you are hitting larger enemies like Praetorians and stuff in the weak spot, that can work. I just like going to the larger battery. The charge speed is also fairly nice. In tier two, I'll go with the increased reload speed. This is just so that we knock it down to two seconds. If you're taking like born ready with this, then you don't need it. You could go with something like overcharger or the uh, controlled magnetic flow. This one I find actually pretty good with Reatomizer. That way it's just faster to shoot and potentially hit through multiple enemies because you may only have a split second or, a, you know, half a second to actually line up your shot and hit multiple enemies. So this one is not a bad option here. Any of these are completely fine. Usually I go with this one if I'm not running Born Ready. If I am running Born Ready, then I'm usually running the uh, Magnetic Flow. Uh, in Tier 3, both of these options are really good. You can go with Concussion Rounds or you can go Fear. It's completely your choice. Pick whichever one of these you'd like. Tier 4, again, I really like the, the Defense Enhancement just for the utility of it, where I can just use it even when I'm not in combat, just so that I can reduce fall damage. Uh, but Shockwave is really good for just taking care of small things around you. Uh, and then in Tier 5, again, it's your choice. Pick any of these that you'd like. I do like the dilated injector. It makes it a little bit easier to deal a little bit more AOE damage, but Electric Trail is really good for just dealing a little bit more AOE damage and dealing damage over time and slowing stuff down. The uh, Catalyst is also really good if you have enemies that are on fire. Then we move on to the Mole. This one is a really cool overclock and a really strong overclock. What this one does is each of your shots can penetrate now much further than they could before. And each section of the terrain that you punch through lets you add an additional 150 damage on top of your damage. This comes at the cost of a slightly slower charge speed, which is not that big of a downside. Uh, this one I build usually just for all damage, and it's really, really strong on Dreadnought missions 
It's, it's actually really strong on just about every mission, so long as you get used to pinging enemies or having allies ping enemies, and then lining up a shot through a wall, you can do the kind of, well, actual literal cheese tactic of building yourself like a Swiss cheese tunnel where you just shoot holes all through it so that you can punch through multiple parts of the terrain and get to ridiculous amounts of damage. That's much more of a meme strat, I would say, than an actual functional strat, at least if you want to be going through missions quickly. Yes, it can work really well on elimination missions, especially if you just have the normal Dreadnought or the Hive Guard. Even on the Twins, it can work pretty well. Anyway, the way that I like to build Mole is going with either increased damage in Tier 1 or increased ammo. Both of these are pretty good options. It just depends on what you want more. Do you want to hit harder with one hit or do you want to have more shots to follow up that one hit with? Usually if I'm taking this, this is all of my single target damage and I'm running a heavy AOE second or a primary weapon. So I might be running bullet hell on the minigun. I might be running uh, any overclock really on the auto cannon besides Big Bertha. So that's why a lot of time I'll just take damage. If I'm not doing that and I'm running more of a general purpose thing, like I'm running a little more oomph minigun or something, I might take more ammo just so that I can use this one more often. In tier two, I like taking overcharger. This is just so that we have even more damage once we punch through that wall or those walls and hit whatever we're trying to hit behind it. This makes it so you hit ridiculously hard on enemies just with this whole combination. Tier three, I like the concussion rounds again. In tier four, again, I like going to the defensive enhancement just for the utility of it. If you don't care about the utility whatsoever, shockwave is a great option just because you can blow away any small enemies near you. So it makes it potentially easier for you to just not get swarmed. In tier five, it's really your choice. Pick any of these that you'd like. If you're going with incinerary grenades or an incinerary build um, on one of your primary weapons, then the catalyst is pretty decent. Dilator is always great just because you can hit more enemies with it. And electricity trail is also great just because if you have any enemies that run into the trail after you fired it, it will slow them down and deal a little bit of damage. All right, now moving on to our unstable overclocks. Our first one is Hellfire and Hellfire recently got nerfed. Hellfire now no longer has the trail duration last for 5 seconds, it only lasts for 3 seconds, which makes it not as good at killing things like robots as it used to be. It'll still kill the turrets though, because it still lingers long enough for them, and it can still kill the flying robots, just not as consistently as it could before. So what Hellfire does is, at full charge, there is an additional trail that comes from the charge shot, which has a 2 meter radius around the charge shot that will then deal uh, heat damage, or I guess heat, heat build up to all enemies around it. It catches things on fire extremely fast, but this does come at the cost of us losing overall ammo, overall charge speed, and of course the trail duration nerf too. So for this, in tier one, I pretty much always take larger battery here. It doesn't really matter for the extra damage and it doesn't really matter for the charge speed. The charge speed we can live with, not having a whole bunch of shots, that is a bit more rough in my opinion. Uh, because I usually use this for crowd control and it does work really well against crowds. It can also still work quite well as a sniper pistol um, or I guess as a sniper secondary to where you can pick off things like leeches or Mactera. In tier two, this is kind of your option. You can take any of these. The controlled magnetic flow might sound like a good option to take in tier two just because you can then only charge up a little bit and fire it and have the fire. That's not how Hellfire actually works though. You do need a full charge for it to work. So controlled magnetic flow doesn't really help unless you just want to be using this as a standard pistol. Like Overcharger is still really good, especially if you want to use it as a sniper, it will do more damage to a single target. You could also go just go with improved feed mechanism. That's usually what I go with just for the faster reload speed, just out of convenience sake, if I want to put down multiple Hellfire trails. Um, tier three, I do like going with the concussive stun again. I find that pretty useful. It does make it so anything that I hit that didn't die from the shot is definitely caught within the fire and will catch on fire, assuming it's not like a robot where it can't be stunned. Fear is kind of a hit or miss option here. I don't really like it that much on Hellfire um, because enemies might be scared away from the trail. Sometimes they'll be scared into the trail and light themselves on fire more, but it can go either way. So I just don't take it that much. Um, in tier four, again, the defense enhancement is just really nice for me to have and you really don't need shockwave with this because you're likely going to light everything on fire directly in front of you which will kill any small enemies like swarmers and then in tier 5 usually I'll go with either the injector system or I'll go with the lightning trail this way you can apply fire and electricity the electricity also slows so it's very likely that anything caught inside of it is going to also be lit on fire 
it might even be lit on fire before it actually touches the electricity trail. The uh, injector just makes it so you have a bigger trail. You'd also think that the catalyst would work here too, where um, if you kill a burning enemy, then it will explode. And this could count for the fire dealing damage and causing this to happen. It does not. You have to kill the enemy with an actual shot from the gun, not from the AOE of the fire dealing damage over time for it to go off. So for this, I find it just not way great on Hellfire. If you have a very fire heavy team, then this one wouldn't be a bad option either. But usually I go with either the electricity trail or the injector system. It's your call. Depends on which one you like more. I do like applying the multiple status effects, so I usually take the electricity trail. And then our last overclocked is triple tech chamber. This makes it so after firing a charge shot, this is not a fully charged shot. This is just any uh, level of a charge shot. You can then fire up to two additional shots so long as they are one second away from one another. So you can fire once, wait about a second, fire the second one, wait a second, fire the third one assuming you need those. You don't have to fire out all three shots. Um, you can fire them out very fast, but you are going to have a lot of recoil from this. For each additional shot that you fire, this will cost half of the ammo that the first shot used. These other two shots do not penetrate terrain whatsoever, and this comes at the cost of a slower charge speed and a longer reload. The way that I usually build triple tech in tier one, I'll go with extra ammo because sometimes I do find myself going through ammo fairly quickly with this. You could go with more damage, that does make it so you can potentially hit harder with your second and third shot. Um, it just kind of depends on how you want to use the gun. In tier two, I don't know if Overcharger actually adds up any more damage on the, on the uh, second and third shot. I know it does in the first shot, but I'm not sure about the second or third shot. It seems not to, but I could be completely wrong about that. You can also go with the um, controlled magnetic flow. This allows you to fire at um, a reduced amount of percentage so that you use a reduced amount of ammo. And then you can also fire the next two shots, which also fire at reduced damage and reduced ammo. I have used this one and found it to be okay, at least when I've charged it up somewhat, about 50% if I'm trying to hit multiple things in the head. Um, it's not bad if you want to take this in combination with the electric trail because each of these shots can have the electric trail on them So you can put out three of them and even if you're just firing it at the lowest amount of charge And you're mostly using it for the electricity. It can work. Okay in a crowd setting Especially if you are hitting some of the high value targets like slashers or acid spitters I'm not sure if I actually really like this one or not yeah, I kind of go back and forth on it. Some missions it seems to do really well. On uh, Critical Weakness it seems to do extremely well, but on other mission types it's kind of iffy. I would say give this one a shot and see how you like it, um, and then decide. A lot of the time though I'll just take the improved feed mechanism. This just cuts down on the reload time. Again, if I'm using this with Born Ready it's not a huge deal because I'll usually just fire this the three shots and then switch back to my primary weapon. Tier 3, both of these are pretty good because both of these apply to uh, each follow-up shot. So you can potentially concuss three rows or at least three enemies with this. You can also potentially fear up to three rows of enemies or anywhere near those enemies. In tier four, again, I really like the defense enhancement. I believe the shockwave counts for every single shot from this though. So if you do find yourself on like swarm again, you want to take the coil gun, but you're kind of worried about that. Having multiple shockwaves could be useful. And then in tier five, I do really like going with the electricity trail. Firing off three electricity trails is really useful. Those are the ways that I build the coil gun with all of its overclocks. Next up, we're going to be talking about the wave cooker, and then we're going to probably take a little break from this and come back to the shard diffractor. I still need a little bit more time to test out their overclocks and how I really enjoy running them. I definitely have an idea for some of them, but others still feel a little bit odd to me, and I would like to um, test them out a little bit more. So thanks everybody for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it gave you some ideas for builds for the coil gun. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this, and if you guys would like to be a part of that, you can. There are links down in the description. Thanks everybody who does that. You guys all have a great day, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye!